Hi there, I'm going to attempt a quick, as I always say, quick acrylic painting demo and in this demo I'm going to be painting on a very small scale and I'm going to be using the acrylic in a very thick, well quite a thick way, at least not watered down. I am going to base my demonstration on this sketch which I've showed in a previous video of my Sanker sketchbook, Sanker in Dumfries and Galloway, on the railway line, part of my Scotland by Rail project. Um, there's this really interesting loch, loch, sorry, black loch. I always want to say black loch, but I should say black loch. Very confusing. So, black loch down near Sanker, near Lochside Cottages where we stayed. And um, this sketch is done using pencil and watercolour, so it's a fairly delicate sketch. Delicate isn't really the effect achieved in this way of working with acrylic. But um, nevertheless, I'm going to use this sketch to inform my acrylic painting, which will be painted on this. And you can see these interesting sloping edges. What this is, is this is a way I get quite a lot of my um, surface for painting on. This is the centre of mount board and when framers are open again you can quite often go along to your local framer and ask if they've got any of these centre pieces from mounts which they've cut for other customers. And these pieces are really too small for them to do anything else with. And I've certainly found that framers have been happy to give me some offcuts like this. So on this one, quite nice because I have allowed the, I have allowed my painting to go over the edges, so the painting extends on this sloping edge and sort of makes the painting appear a little bit more three dimensional. This painting's not quite complete, it's the tail of one of the humpback whales which have visited us in the fourth for the last few years, although not this spring unfortunately. These two, I decided to turn that sloping edge into a border, a very obvious painted border, and it means that these paintings they don't really need framed at all, just a bit of blue tack put onto the back of these and you can stick these up on your wall, on your fridge, wherever you fancy. Nice little ready framed painting. So that's what I'm going to go for today. I'll bring this one back actually. Have a look at this. Can you see the quite thick acrylic paint here? Very little water has been added into my acrylic paints. Just been putting it on using the acrylic mostly straight from the tube and brush. Fine brush here for this close up tree, fine brush here for these further off trees, and a wider, broader brush for the sky and the hillside. Same with this one. You can see the wide brush strokes in the distance, this building on the left, this tree, the distant trees again, each one is just one dark green brush stroke and one dark blue brush stroke. Rather than letting you see me putting out all my paints onto my palette and taking up a lot of unnecessary time, I'll just show you one or two. So my acrylic paints are in these pretty big tubs which are far too expensive to buy but have lasted me for years, really for um, about 10 years some of these tubs have lasted me. So what I do is I get the tub, I get my palette knife. My favourite type of palette knife is this rectangular ended type. I try to never put out too much acrylic, try to put out too little, because acrylic dries up and gets wasted. So try to put out less than you'll need and just add more onto your palette when you do need more. Screw the lid back on, make sure it's on really tight so that your paints last 10 years too. And then get yourself an old piece of tissue, an old cafe napkin or 
your old socks which you save as rags. And I wipe off all that excess paint onto the tissue. You don't want excess paint going down your, your sink if at all possible because that is effectively putting plastic into the into the water courses and into the oceans. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of this lovely golden yellow. This is going over here on my palette. You can't quite see that, I think. I'm now going to pause the video, put out the rest of the paints I want. Okay, I'm back. Haven't quite put out all the paints. I just wanted to show you I have got here white left on the palette knife from putting white down on my palette down here just out of shot. Well, I could get that tissue back and wipe it off, but I will often take the excess paint, if it's the colour that I want, and I go like this and use the palette knife to put it onto my canvas or my piece of mount board or whatever it is I'm working on. Just scratch it across like that. And I just find that that adds an interesting bit of texture when I come to make the painting. So if you look at some of my paintings, you will see that there are textures like this just lurking underneath the sky or lurking underneath the hills in the foreground. Um, usually not in an obvious way, but just there adding a little bit of, of texture to the painting. I seem to be getting paint all over my hands, which is no problem. bit of blue going in as well. This is ultramarine blue. Right, so the colours I put out are ultramarine blue, are um, raw umber, basically a dark blue, a dark brown. I've got white down here, titanium white. I've got my yellow over there, which is a nice sunshine golden yellow. And over here I've got a green, you can't see this one, sorry, a green called chromium oxide green. This is masking tape, brown masking tape, but just the same as the more typical cream coloured masking tape. And I'm making a little loop. What that means is that all of the outside of this loop is sticky. Putting this on the back of my mount board like that and putting this down here. I normally wouldn't have my painting in the middle of the palette but for the purposes of this video I've decided to do that and that tape will just hold it in place a little bit. I should have said that painting demonstrations can go wrong and artists take no responsibility for the results of paintings created during painting demonstrations. Sometimes it works really well, the pressure of knowing that people are watching. Um, just opening up my water jars, I use old coffee jars which have a good vacuum seal. And I use quite large ones so that I don't have to keep on uh, replacing water all the time. Trying not to get water onto my sketchbook. Okay. So I may not need to use this water much at all, as I mentioned earlier. So here is some green. And remember, I'm going for a thick, chunky sort of look. You can use acrylic really delicately. You can use it really very much like watercolour. You can also use it really, really, really thickly. Applied only using a palette knife or anywhere in between. But for this particular painting, I'm going for that chunky style, as in this one here. 
here I'm mixing up the green and the yellow on my palette. I haven't added any water onto this brush. That under uh, undercoating of white and of blue which I put on there, it's already pretty dry. Oh yes, and of course you'll see the mount board. I should have mentioned this before. The mount board I have um, pre-painted it with that light blue, turquoisey blue, and I very very often do that with my surfaces. I tend to use up old paint, which if I have put too much acrylic out on my palette, I tend to use up any excess to put a background colour on pieces of mount board, which I can then use in the future. Now I'm going to add some white into this. For the further off fields and hills. I like painting in this way without really cleaning the brush much. And I find that this way is most appropriate on a small scale as here. I also find it quite confusing doing these video demos because I'm looking at my palette, I'm looking at my painting, I'm looking at my sketchbook up there at the scene that I'm painting and I also keep looking at the screen of my phone to try and make sure that it is still recording. Which it appears to be. Some of that lovely warm yellow is now going back into this mix and it's going to go in the foreground to lighten up this foreground a bit. Most of my brush strokes so far have been fairly horizontal or waving horizontals, but now I'm putting in some verticals. And you can see I'm not really putting um, much effort into exactly how these vertical strokes are going on but they are starting to give the impression they are giving the impression of um bunches of grasses or reeds in the foreground here's the sketch again i'll need to get the loch in there soon going to be here in the middle. more white mixing in and I'm going to now put some of this on top of those tufts and tussocks in the foreground. Paint's getting quite thick down here. Okay, my rag today is going to be this old sock. Clean old sock. You really have to be careful which rags you're using, which rags you have to hand before you start videoing. I'm going to do something up in the sky. I really like it in painting when the paint does things which you hadn't necessarily planned, uh, happy accidents. So here, this piece of blue, blue background, which I have managed to not paint over with the white, 
I am going to consider that as this triangular hilltop and try to make something of that. And I'm going to bring some of this white down misty hillside, I think. I think I'm going for. To try to tie the whole painting together, I'm also going to have touches of this white down here in the foreground. I've moved on to a smaller brush now. I love the way that the thick paint on the brush picks up other colours. Okay. Um, oh, paint's going everywhere. Right, I think it's time to put in the loch, black, black loch. So I've got the blue, I've got white, and I've put in a touch of brown there to try to just dull down that blue a little bit. Have a look at this brush and you can see it's really, really gunked up. You don't want to leave your brushes like that for a long time, full of acrylic, because it will gunk them up completely. You can also do what I just did, which is get a palette knife. Pretend I hadn't done it yet. Get a palette knife, put your brush down onto the canvas, uh, onto the palette, and use the palette knife to squeeze a lot of that paint out. And then use the brush to pick up the thick paint again. Now, I need to get a little bit more white out. Right, so I've got myself some more white out now, white paint, and I've just done a little bit more to the painting whilst I thought it was recording, but it was in fact paused. Um, I have gone around the top here, putting, bringing the sky onto the sloping edge, and I've put in some pure white highlights down here. Not too much more that I'm going to do to this, I'm going to put evidence of the Cranog Island in the centre. But that colour which I just mixed up down there, there was white in my brush and I don't want any white there just yet. I want to have a dark brown blue bit of green going on here. And I'm also going to bring some of this down here. Moving on to my third brush of the painting. I hear a toddler coming up the stairs. I may need to pause again in a moment.
Okay, now we're going to put in some lighter shades onto the island. Just think that people lived in a hut on that island. I wonder of all the black-headed gulls which have a big nesting colony there now, I wonder whether they did still nest there when humans were there so much. I suspect they maybe didn't. But I would like there to be some evidence of the birds in this painting. So here we go. But trying not to put them on in any detailed way. This is the only stage of the painting where I've added a bit of water into the paint and it's to try to make it slightly more flowing on my brush so that I can make it stick on top of the still wet. On top of the still wet sky. Okay, not much more to do. Filling in some bits of unpainted edge here. And I'll tend to find with a painting like this that I will look back at it um, once it's dried and I may well put a few more little touches onto it. But most of the painting can just be done in one sitting like this. I didn't show there properly but what I do is when I've still got acrylic on my brushes, before I've put the brushes into the water, I wipe off as much as I can, then I clean the brushes in the jar of water to minimise the paint which you are going to put down the sink if you do empty your water into the sink. Putting a bit more bit of giving a bit of a bit of a better shape to this bird up here Okay, um, cleaning the excess off my brush before putting it in the water. Green hands. Now let's see. So a thick acrylic gloopy painting 
done on an old piece of mount board so that those nice sloping edges are still showing. I could, if I wanted, paint a coloured border once it's dried, as here, or I could leave it as it is like, as it is just now. Here's the painting on a white background. Okay, thank you for watching.